Hey Tamati, I um, just wanted to get you to reflect on this year, you know, first year in the team, um, now to be preparing for a World Cup final. Um, what does this roller coaster, I suppose, been like for you? Um, yeah, man, uh, it's been it's been crazy. It's quite funny. I went out for um, for brunch with, with my mum and my fiance yesterday, and kind of sat back and said, "Damn, how long has this year been?" But, um, but we're in the most important week of the year now, so um, uh, I'll leave the reflections for for the summer. Yeah. So sunny, Springboks, uh, rivalry. This group relishes a lot of respect there, but for you, if you do get a, a run on. Saturday night, how much do you relish that physical challenge of, of going up against the box? Um, yeah, obviously the Springboks are very, very good at what they do and that's like um, physically, um, they're big men and they uh, like the confrontation, so um, but I like to uh, base my game around that, so, so I'm really excited about if I get the opportunity to, to do that and um, I'm sure all the boys are looking forward to it. Um, like Tamari said, it's the most important week of, of the tournament and um, yeah, we're really excited, just pumped, ready to go. Tamari, uh, yeah, the Springbok scrum, obviously they've got that crucial penalty at the end of the day and gets back in the fight for them. Would you just a little on how powerful their scrum is and what they need to do to counter that? Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah the the great scrummages, bro, as we all know in this room, and um, and they've shown that for the last however long. So um, for me, it's like like Sonny said, if I get the opportunity to to be out there on Saturday, um, I'll, I'll be up for the challenge. But um, it, it all starts in the week, and the in the preparation in the week, we'll have a closer look and um, how we can counter that. And uh, and just a word on Sam Kane, how impressed have been with him playing on the field in his position and also as a skip? Yeah, he's a great skip, mate. Um, he's a good friend and he's a good guy. I just um, I just love going out there and um, do whatever he wants me to do. So uh, he, uh, he's a great man and he's a great skip. Touch on there's a um, few of the of the legend of this team um, as the rugby players and management. Um, it's their last last week, I guess, being being an All Black. So um, it's uh, it's there, but I'm sure for them it's all about the team. So it's all about um, what what's best for the team for this week. And um, but yeah, so whoever gets the opportunity to get out there, it'll be we up there um, trying to send them off um, the way they deserve, which is. Um, obviously, uh, hopefully with a, with a victory and send them off on a high. So, um, yeah, everyone's looking forward to it, but I think they don't really want to talk too much about that. It's more about uh, what the team needs right now um, and what the team needs to do to get ready to play a really good Springbok side on Saturday night. So, yeah. Just in terms of obviously massive occasion, a lot of emotion that will be around What's the balance like in terms of embracing that and um, yeah, like you said, the balance. Um, for me, my prep's the same every week. Doesn't matter who it is. So, uh, I guess to answer your question, it's you work all year to this point, and um, I pride myself on my preparation. So I'll trust that, and um, yeah. So Martin, I think before you debut against uh, for Mount Smart, you hadn't played them, you know, super level or any level. What's been the biggest lessons in the, the games you've had since uh, against them, and does that help you prepare for um, a challenge like this week in the World Cup final? Yeah, um, are they massive both? That's one. Um, but just how clinical they are. So um, if you give them a chance, they'll take it. So for us, for me, it's all about being um, being clean. And you just got to match the physicality they're going to bring because um, everyone knows what they're going to bring, but it's
it's, it's us that has to stop it. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been a great learning plan this three weeks. Um, I had a good win against them, and we've got a hiding against them as well. So, um, like the very said, I'll get the balance right, and uh, yeah. So, did you take anything out of that game at Twickenham um, in terms of you know developing this week and winning game plans? Yeah, obviously, um, was disappointing um, outing for us as a team as an All Black forward back um, in Twickenham. Um, you always take learnings from um, from every games, but a lot more when um, when he didn't get the job done. So, um, yeah, we've um, reviewed that game um, and take a lot of learnings from there. So, it'll help us build the week and what we need to do um, to come up against a really physical South African forward back so, yeah. So Marty, um, there's a lot said and written about the box bomb squad, which is their, their impact group off the bench. You're part of your work's bomb squad. Can you just talk about that collective kind of um, mentality you guys have to make your impact in a game and I guess what you'll look to do to match that, what those box do? Yeah, um, yeah, it's clear they've got a good bench, man, and they, and they do the damage when they come on. But for us, um, for us that are on the bench, it's whatever the team needs first. Um, whatever the team <coughs> needs us to do off the bench with our, our impact, if it's energy with our voice, energy with our ball carry, our set piece. So um, there's a lot of talk about them, but we're just going to focus on ourselves and uh, make sure we're primed so um, whoever's on the bench and when the bench comes on, make sure we make the impact. Yeah, and just on your year, I know you're not reflect in reflective mode just yet, but it's been an incredible year for you, making this breakthrough and, and the journey you're on now. Has it been one piece of advice, one, one message from someone in this group, outside this group, something that's really resonated with you that, that's kind of, um, you know, that stuck with you and, and that you kind of you, have used uh, to, I guess, meet this challenge at this level? Uh, there's been heaps of advice and heaps of, uh, I've got a lot of mentors. Um, but one that really st st has stood out for me this year is, um, I think it was, a, uh, it was in the pre-season when the All Blacks came back. I remember Sam Whitelock saying to me, you just got to get 1% better every day. And um, that's kind of the, the mindset I've taken on board. And you take the learnings on yesterday and you move on to today. So, um, yeah, 1% better every day. What was the brunch? <laughs> um, we had a poke bowl, uh, a bit of rice, karaki chicken, uh, heaps of veggies. So. Quite hard to avoid the pastries. Some of us. <laughs> yeah, we had a few pastries during the last few days. So. Yeah. Can I, I know I've spoken to you about this during the season, but, <clears throat> and your mum's here and she's heavily involved in that. In the Kaio Club, what does it mean to you? What would it mean to you this weekend to to play for your community once again on what is a massive ball stage? <clears throat> um, oh, you know me, I wear my, my heart on my sleeve every day, and um, I know where I'm from. And uh, this weekend for my community, I mean, it's probably. I would say putting the far north on the map, I guess. Um, not just in New Zealand, but in the whole world. So um, I'm lucky enough to come from a, a great place, and uh, yeah, I want to express that. Craig and Snapper, after being on the way from home? More of a kingfish, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Marty. Christy from Australia, just the time everyone's still here. Um, <laughs> you, you obviously spent a long while there. Um, can you tell me a little bit about growing up in Oz and uh, still have friends and, and some family there at all and if you had any kind of messages and, and just kind of what impact um, and how you came through your own the pathways there? Yeah, nice, bro. I've got 16 years of my life in Perth, Western Australia. Um, it holds a massive part of my heart. But the, the pathways, I, I just came through the, the schooling system and the force uh, representative teams and um, well, I love that place. Uh, I, I didn't actually want to leave but I, like I said before, my, 
my parents had had a, a vision that I couldn't see. But um, I have a lot of family in Australia and um, down at the bullpen at um, Kalamunda. So, um, yeah, man, I, I try to get back there as much as I can. I went last year for my uncle's 30th and um, I've seen schoolmates, uh, cousins, aunties, uncles. And, um, yeah, it's, it holds a special place in my heart as well. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I also say I'm from Perth as well, but, yeah. And, and lots of messages uh, last couple of weeks, I imagine, from, from people back there? Yeah, right, heaps. Uh, <laughs> um, I have to kind of filter it out and I try to reply to them in a set time, but uh, I don't spend too much time replying. But I will, I will make sure I reply to everyone when I have the time. Sam <coughs> Sonny, um, you touched on kind of called you before, but just wonder if you could reflect on the time you spent with him and with Cody as well, and yeah. I suppose that competition between the three of you, and, and, and how much of a, a better player has having those guys around you made you? Um, yeah, I'd uh, obviously first meet it in here in 2021, um, yeah, just clicked on with Cozy. I think I was a bit more too cheeky to him more than anything, but um, yeah, take me under his wing, um, Cody as well, I'm just, I'm just really in a lucky spot of coming in with two world class hookers, I'm battling it out and just learning off from them. Um, yeah, I was just, it's quite funny because um, this week was just, at the start I was just a bit, um, bit emotional, like a little bit because I'm like, oh, it's the last week with Grandy, so, um, <laughs> yeah, so, but, like, um, Tamari said, it was, we'll leave the re reflecting to afterwards and I'm sure we'll have a few quiet ones and talk about how much he, um, he obviously developed me as a player, but not just a rugby player, but as a human being as well, he's a top man. And, um, the competition side of it, um, yeah, obviously whoever gets the, gets the nod, um, we pick them 100% to get the job done. And it's the job of the person who's not in the 23 to prepare them the best they could. So um, come game day, they're ready for anything. So nothing changes this week and um, yeah, looking forward to it. So there was, a, there was an instant spark with Colsey, was it? Yeah, I think um, more like uh, it just kind of break the ice and try to make me feel like um, I belong and um, I, yeah, I think he requests it now because um, <laughs> I'm quite a bit cheeky to him. So, um, but it's, uh, when it's time to be serious, we're serious and when it's time to choke around, we, we love to have a laugh and um, Cody as well, so yeah. What did he do to break the ice? Um, I think he was giving me a bit, a few advice and a, a few smart comments about my throwing when I first got in, so that kind of um, they broke the ice a bit and I went and asked for him for help and stuff and was really just open and just let me know what I needed to do and um, help me out and yeah, just changed me, changed the player I am, um, but also the way I look at the game and how professional he is, him and Cody. Um, to be able to be in this game for however long he's been here, I lost count. So, um, yeah, to be at 36 and still playing really, really good footy, um, it's credit to him. And, um, yeah, so it's pretty good. One more question, right? So, Mighty, what more about the box, the, the spring box prop? Is he someone special in the props corporation when you see him scream aging? Or what, what do you see in the box? Oh, he's tough, bro. Right? He's a. Uh, yeah, I just, I just look how tough he is, and now uh, he's a great pro. Um, yeah. Is it free to mention someone different than the other props? Uh, there's a lot of freaks in nature in this rugby world cup, and one's next to me right here. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's a special human bro, and uh, he does his job well. Hi, Scott. Good. Good. Um, this is a, um, I've just uh, been asked to present a new idea for the former CEO, David Moffat of New Zealand Rugby, and it's an idea to galvanise support back home in New Zealand to show you guys how much you love back home and how much people want you to win this final. And his idea is simply that to get all school kids this week to wear something black to the games, either black socks or shirts or shorts, and then get the schools to line them up on the field, maybe in the Navy, send some photos to you guys. What would you feel about that? Oh, I'd feel an um, immense amount of pride and um, support. We've felt that um, through the whole tournament, 
even without that concept. So to um, to have that would be bloody good. I see the uh, Highlanders have changed their logo to black too, so there's already a, a little bit of a movement going, which is fantastic. I actually ran it past Fozzie's here, it's a great idea as well, so you'd be more than happy. Absolutely. So after Dominic winning the semi final, Dominic winning the quarter final, could you just talk about the group's confidence, I suppose, in terms of their performance heading in um, to the final? Yeah, there's um, a lot of aspects of our game that are working and that builds belief. Um, it's something that uh, we've been working on for quite a while and for to see it um, work under the um, those moments, I guess, in quarters and semis, it's very pleasing. So um, it's just about harnessing that now and making sure we do it again. Do you learn anything new about the Springboks in that semi-final? I suppose England probably the better team for the most part of that game, but to show you that the Springboks are never out of it? Oh, never. Um, that's always their mentality. They, they come for a country where um, they're very hardened um, and they know how to stay in the fight and, and to win the fight, and they've shown that many years. They showed that in the last World Cup as well. So um, not much of their DNA has changed, no. Scott, what's your... Sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, just being able to see space um, and not narrowing in those moments. Um, like Argentina, were extremely physical and we had to work hard to, to get through. Um, but there's also space around that. So although we, you know, the spring box will be very similar, um, they apply a lot of pressure and come at you quite quickly. So we still have to have time to be able to see that space and put the ball into that space. Um, and on the other side of the ball, uh, you know, big men running down hard. We can't sit and wait, um, and we, we want to meet that head on. A set piece just needs to be extremely accurate. What's shown through the tournament is that scrum is um, you need to be on, and every single scrum. Um, so th those are the key things um, we took out, um, and ideally they you know they line up with a lot of South Africa's strengths as well. What relevance does the Twickenham game pre tournament have any have this week? Does it motivate you? Can you use it at all? Oh, not so much on a motivational um, aspect, but more in. Um, scenarios, um, how do we respond? So we took a lot of learning out of that, particularly when we're down to 13 men, um, how we want to play the game. And it's shown through the tournament that, um, you know, we, we've had a few cards and I think we've shown that we've learnt through that. So that's what we'll take forward from that game. Scott, uh, what are the particular de defensive challenges that the box pose? Because I guess when we were looking at them on the stands, it seems a reasonably kind of simple uh, attacking game they play, a lot of kicking, a lot of direct running, but I'm sure if you guys dig down until there's some complexities there. Oh, absolutely. Um, definitely their kicking game, so um, we haven't encountered a lot of that, um, so that's something we're, we're aware of and we'll build into this week. Uh, they're, they're very good at getting up in, in the air um, and getting the ball back, and that's one of the when they do get excited, it's about turning over the ball and, and putting it into space again and behind or spreading it wide and playing from that. And when they do that well, they've shown to score tries. They scored tries um, off the aerial stuff as well, catching that and regathering against us and other teams in this World Cup. So, like I say, we'll definitely be building our detail into how we can win those those moments. And just obviously there's a balance between physical and mental in a week like this, particularly at the end of the long tournament. Is it, you know, I mean, yeah, as coaches, are you very aware of the need to kind of keep as much freshness as you can and have that mental sort of clarity, I guess? Yeah, it's, it's, there's two parts to that, I think. Um, there's the bodies. Um, but looking at um, how we're tracking, and we've got 33 fit men, um, a number of those guys have come back from injury lately, so they haven't felt the full wear and tear of a whole tournament, and they're actually feeling quite fresh. And when you, um, when you, um, parts of your game work through the quarterfinal and semifinal, when you get, when that works and you get belief out of that, that's also mental freshness. It's, it's not a, something that drags you down. So um, both mentally and physically, we're ready for this. Um, 
we're quite excited already, and like I said um, last week, we're probably just going to have to hold the boys back a little bit from that. Sorry. You've played each other twice already this year, and in both games, the team that got out the blocks and fastest is the one that we're going to win. Mm. How important is that start going to be in this game, particularly? Yeah, it's no secret both sides will be focusing on that first 20 minutes, I imagine. Um, and it's who can execute um, with accuracy. We've talked about that this morning. Um, we, we need to be extremely accurate, show the pitches that we want to show and, and be able to apply pressure at the same time. Um, but it, like I say, the box have always come out um, and wanted to start uh, well. And we'll take our lessons from Mount Smart and want to do the same there. What's the difference between the two games, kicking game? Because in the first one in Auckland, you guys won that clearly or battle. The second one, they won that clearly or battle. What, what's the difference in those two games? We won and they won. Um, the first person into the year to win the, win the space, probably. Um, we felt we were a little bit hungrier, maybe a little bit quicker in that first game. And in the second game, we were slow. We were slow to get into the year. We were slow to get back and assist and help. And, they beat us into that space, so whoever will win those spaces will, will win that battle. Scott, uh, how would you rate Jordi Barrett on a defensive aspect? And could you give us an insight on how you, the work you did with him, how you empowered him in this role? Yeah, well, he, I see he got player of the, player of the match the other day. Um, he was massive in defence. He attempted the most tackles, but what was the pleasing aspect for me was um, he actually applied pressure so the difference between Ireland where um, we were probably holding a little bit and not trying to show any space in our line, whereas against Argentina, um, the opportunity that arose, he went out and pressured that. So he, he saw the pitches a lot earlier and he backed himself to go and do it and those around him supported him in that and he made quite a difference for us. So like on that edge when they were wanting to go, he's, he was able to shut that down and pressure that. So he made some big, big leaps there. Would you say he stepped as the boss of your defence? Uh, I've got um, eight in my group, um, but he has been the one I've worked with the closest around our set-piece defence, and he, on the field, he'll lead that. Um, but like I say, with the other eight guys, they've got different areas of the game that they're going to lead, so... But, but he's one of them, yeah. Uh, Scott, you're running forecast around Paris this week. Will that affect your game plan and attack or defence? No. And, uh, Sorry, yeah. No, I don't think so. Um, we know the way we want to play. We back ourselves to that. We've um, trained um, the skill set to, to function in the wet. Um, it was a little bit slippery the other day. Most grounds that we find that we've come to, have there's been some dew or, or some wetness on the ground, So, and we've been able to handle that. And just a word on Sam Kane, how have you been with him, both uh, as a player and a captain? Yeah, he's immense. Um, Quite often I go up to him after he's addressed the team and just tell him how inspired I was. Um, often I get goosebumps uh, listening to him and I feel like putting the boots on myself half the time. Um, and what we talk about is now actions. So he's, he's, he speaks really well, but now he's backing that up with his actions as well. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen that World Rugby have announced they're reviewing the allegations uh, of discriminatory language used during South Africa. How much are you guys following that and what difference would it make if a player like Bongi wasn't on the field? Yeah, uh, no, we're not really following it as such. I, I learned about that this morning. Um, it's something World Rugby will deal with. I understand the process is still ongoing. So, But I, if, if anything came of that firm, I'd imagine there'd be a massive... Um, dent for them. Um, he's a leader of their team. Um, when Sia goes off, then he becomes the captain. So um, I imagine that that would really impact them, yeah. Hi, Scott. Um, Saturday will represent the last game for a lot of legends of New Zealand rugby. Just one in particular, if you reflect on the career of Aaron Smith and his legacy for your back. He's, yeah, he's a guy I've worked with um, for a long time, um, down with the Highlanders and, and now with the All Blacks. Um, he's got a special place in my heart because of his passion. Um, the way he applies himself every single day is for the betterment of the team. 
and that's grown his legacy. He's an absolute professional um, on and off the field. He he gets his body right, he gets his mind right, and um, he gives it nothing short of 100 every single time. And He's, he's a, a player in, in my group in the defence, and the passion he shows and the willingness and um, is just contagious, and I just think the world of him, really. Uh, Scott, uh, Lott was spoken about last week about being able to reset after that quarter final on Seabrook. Well, in the semis, is it much of the same this week and how you approach it and how you get that reset right? Yeah, probably a little bit different. Uh, um, we've had an extra day to recover and with that probably comes um, freshness, whereas the other day was a six-day turnaround, so we had to um, manage that and then build the excitement within the group, whereas this week takes care of itself. Um, like I say, with that extra day, um, we probably have to hold the boys back a little bit so, and not play the game too early. And As coaches as well and staff, we have to do that as well. Like Everyone's excited about the week, so just being able to manage that. I know you guys didn't necessarily have a preference when you played in this final, but how special that it is to spring up to the history of the two teams and what's on the line. Yeah, it's massive. Um, I remember touring there many years ago and I was blown away, away by the passion of the people. Um, they were very competitive and they told you and they were in your face. Um, but as soon as the whistle went, they some of the best people to socialise with and have a barbecue, a bra and a beer. And, um, that respect um, has never gone away and I, I doubt it ever will between the All Blacks and the South Africans. Um, and it's something we treasure, um, that fierce competitiveness on the field but afterwards just being able to, to have a yak and, and be good men. Scott, um, it's obviously you know, a massive week. Um, do you, we do anything different to mark the fact that this World Cup final is trying to talk about Sam, you know, Jason Everett, and um, inspiring team? Um, we do anything to mark the occasion to try and elevate things a little bit? Anything <coughs> special? I don't know. I don't think it needs any elevation or anything special. Um, uh, I don't think there's anything planned, I haven't heard of anything, but I wouldn't think we would. We just go bone deep in terms of our preparation um, and just slowly build it as we go. Um, and like I say, probably do a little bit less than adding anything in. Uh, Scott, down the back. Um, defeats is often a bad attitude, but also systems. What's, what's clicked within this team on defence and, and how important was that stand against Ireland? For, for confidence in the things. Yeah, it's, um, it's something that uh, if we look last year in particular where we got beaten and how we got beaten, um, we were tending to defend um, man system and Ireland were too good last year then being able to put the ball into spaces and get through us and play through us. Now a lot of that is coached in Super Rugby in New Zealand and I do know that Northern Hemisphere sides in particular they will target Kiwis who play up here because they know they're going to be man focused rather than ball focused so we had to shift our skill set and the way we, um, the way we um, looked at things as defenders and so planted the seed earlier this year with the leaders um, got them to work through it through the super and then it got tested early on and, and throughout all the games we've actually been tested quite thoroughly on that. Um, however when the push came to shove particularly with Ireland who were going to test us the most um, it stood up and that was really pleasing. It still um, is relevant against the South African boys who you don't need to make as many decisions on the ball but you still need to be able to see where the ball's going and then watch them put some bodies in front of them. So um, that's probably been the, the biggest shift for us and we'll see if it can hold up again. Do you feel like mine next to the racetrack? Yeah, a little bit, I'll keep looking out there, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Nice. Uh, yeah, Scott, can I just ask you on the kicking game that you talked about, really covering the kicking game. Um, any specific stuff you're gonna be doing this week to work on that? I read somewhere that English work with wet balls, for example, Sorry, can you repeat the start of that? I missed the start. Countering the kicking game. Countering the kicking game, yep. Uh, like I just said, just making sure that our, um, 
whoever's catching the ball um, can actually get up and win and catch it. It's as simple as that. Um, if we do that, then we control um, the ball and what we can do with it. If, if we don't win that airspace and get up and catch it, then, like I said, it's one of South Africa's main threats are their ability to play quickly off those turnovers, and we don't want to give them that opportunity. Scott, there's a bit of needle in the England South Africa game. Um, South Africa trying to impose themselves with some flash points, hands not shaking at the end, celebrations in their place. What did you make of that? And is, was it the spirit of rugby, do you think? I, I, to be fair, I don't really know what went on after that. Um, I haven't watched any of that or seen any of that. Um, a lot of things happen on the field um, and emotions are extremely high. People react differently in different situations. Um, however, in the spirit of the game, once the whistle's blown and it's gone, then um, you should um, respect what has happened and, and shake hands and, and move on. Um, like I said, that's something we really respect with South Africa. We compete hard with them on the field, but we know once the whistle's gone, then we like to go into each other's change rooms and, and have a beer and, and talk about it and, and get on with each other. So that's what we're looking forward to. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. To stay up to date with all the latest news from the New Zealand Herald, click the subscribe button below or check out one of the videos here. And head over to nzherald.co.nz for more details on these stories and more.